It's Freestyle Friday. Coming in hot with quick shots of inspiration on a variety of topics. Welcome to Friday. Super excited to be here with you. It's your co-host, Wade. And it's Sandy. Oh, man. Are you, are you fired up for today? I'm fired up. We got a dear friend in town. We're going to Laguna Beach later. The sun's out. Like, oh, my gosh. I think I've been seeing over and over this quote that every day is our masterpiece, right? Mm -hmm. There's like a masterpiece to be written every single day. And we, us three, Sandy, myself, and our friend Kelly, were actually watching her global training keynote speaker last night. And he was a great storyteller. What you realize about speakers, they don't drop like as much knowledge, like you should do this, you should do that. They're great storytellers. That's a whole nother topic, whole nother episode. But he told a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. And one part really stuck out to me. I took a few notes and I thought it would be a great Freestyle Friday episode for us to just kick it, go back and forth on. And it was the concept of, he said, you hold the pen to your life story. We all are writing our own life story and we hold the pen. So oftentimes, like we'll walk out, we'll leave our house and we'll apply the story that's been curated for us, whether that's grow up, you have big dreams as a kid, then you go to school and teachers and coaches and different people and parents start to be like, go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a degree, go get a job that's safe and secure. And there's this like, narrative. There's this narrated story, especially here in America, I've found that the road you're supposed to take, right? And we leave the door every day and live into that story. And as we grow older, we fail to recognize that the pen is really in our, in our hand. And this speaker last night, he was encouraging us. He's like, let's pick up the pen. Let's write our own story. Don't let the rest of the world write it. Don't let your parents write it, your teachers write it, your coaches, your friends, your family. And when you go to write the book that is your life, there are going to people that try, that try and write it for you. Like I said, why, why don't you go to school? Why don't you get the safe job? Don't date that person. Don't move away from home. But they don't hold the pen. You do. So let's write our story. And we're not on the last chapter, right? We get to write the rest of our book. Whatever our book looks like up until now, we can pick up the pen and write the ending and make it beautiful. So I want to just open up like conversation for that. I would say it's a Sharpie. It's, okay. it's like thick and it's dark and it's permanent, mm. right? Like every day that we're doing yes. is written in Sharpie and you can't undo it. And I think what it triggers for me is that we have to take 100% responsibility of our life. Like mm. where we are today is because of the choices that we made yesterday. And by yesterday, I literally mean like five years ago, the choices you were making is why you are here today. And where you'll be five years from now is because of the story that you're writing today in Sharpie. Mm. So it's kind of just like taking full responsibility, taking ownership. If you're happy with where you are, own it. If you're not happy with where you are, you can change that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of what comes up for me. I love it. I love the writing in, in Sharpie or in pen and it's permanent. And it bleeds through on the other page. <laughs> it's true. I love that. Yeah. And so would you say you, you hold the pen to your life? Of course. Would you say you always have? Of course. Yeah. Would you say you're more conscious or intentional about it now? Like, did anyone else kind of have guidance over your pen in your life? Oh, yeah. I think growing up, like, through high school and even into college, we're very influenced by our upbringing and our parents and certain mentors or coaches. Um, they play a big influence. I remember feeling like there was not an option to not go to college. Mm -hmm. Like, that is, like, what you're funneled into. Same. And school has never come naturally to me. Mm -hmm. Like, studying, tests. Like, I mean, I am a people person. I love on people. I love making people, people feel special. I work great in groups and things like that. But like when it comes to like reading textbooks or being tested on like statistics or being good at math or science, like that's just not my strength. But I felt like I had to do that because that's what I was funneled into. Mm -hmm. That's what my dad, you know, really stressed that was important. So yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't have gone to college, but I think I that's know. helpful too. You know, as we grow up, we don't know everything. I think as kids, we're writing our own story, right? Every day we're like, I'm going out to play. I'm going outside. I'm going biking. I'm going to go catch frogs in the pond. Like we literally are writing our own story. Yet 
you know, we're dependent on our parents. We're not just free spirited, independent humans, little humans. And so there is a narrative. There is a story that our parents help, right? You know, we got bedtimes. We might have nap times. We got certain food. We can't eat dessert until we eat our broccoli. There's certain can't things. Stay up late. Can't stay up late. And, but we do have that free spirit and we write our story day in, day out with the help and guidance of our parents. And I think as we grow up, especially as we grow up, mentors guidance is huge. But always, we always have to remember, like, we hold the pen. And so guidance is big. And having people help you write your first chapter. But then as, as the older you grow and the more you experience, it's like, let's take control. Like, I have the pen. I'm writing the story, the chapters of my life. And I think it can apply, especially as we think about, let's think about where we're at right now in the world. And, you know, some whether it's economically, let's just use a recession, for example, or like, let's say there's this 2020, oh my gosh, it was crazy. And is there going to be a recession or anything like that? Well, guess what? The news, social media, all these people, they're going to try and curate this story, this narrative for you, right? And But it's your life individually is still up to you. You still hold the pen. You can buy into the story and be like, I'm going to write the story that I hear on the news every day. Or you can be like, you know what? I, I've been listening to some Tony Robbins and a lot of successful people. Wealthy people thrive in the winter time. Oh my, they look forward to, not look forward to, they look at recession as opportunity. Oh my gosh, there's all this crazy stuff happening. Where can I go add value? Where can I go create value in the marketplace? And oftentimes, I'm going to be perfectly honest, wealthy people get richer during recessions. And it's because they go seek and add value because they hold the pen. And that's what you see in successful people. They hold the pen to their life. No one else does. Not their boss, not anyone else. And so it was super encouraging just to think of that. Like we all hold the pen to write the chapters of our life. And we're here to empower you that you hold that pen. No one else does. A part I really like too is, and I love reminding people of this, and I love reminding myself of this, is that you inspire people that pretend not to even see you. Mm. Like, you listening right now, every move you're making, other people are watching and you may not even know this, but you're influencing the way people are writing their story based off how you live. So how are you showing up, right? Like you are a physical, like your life is a physical representation of your thoughts. And so in you living your life, you're influencing other people in how they write their story. So it's just kind of cool how it comes full circle. And every single day, every single one of you is influencing other people's stories. Yes. It's kind of cool how it comes full circle. It's cool too that there's different chapters, right? Yeah. Like right now you and I are very much in a in a build chapter. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot going on, a lot of different things, and it's amazing. And we we have the time to do, to do it and to commit to it. We have the passion to commit to podcasts, to our health and wellness business, to our product business, to a few different businesses, to our investment company. And we're in this build, build, build mode. But we also know we want to start a family too. There's going to be a family chapter and, and we're going to be writing different chapters in our life. At some point, you know, anyone who's a parent is going to be grandparents. You're going to have a grandparent chapter. What legacy do you want to leave? Who do you want to mentor? All these different things. And so know that we're in chapters too. And oftentimes when we're in a chapter that's tough, that's where like greatness comes from, right? Like we see so many people that are successful. Their success was birthed in pain and in in striving to get out of their current circumstances. So know that there's not every chapter is going to be a bright, sunny day. But then, you know, those those darker chapters or those sad chapters or different things are setting you up for that that super bright and sunny day. And there's always a dip before a pop. So I think our message today is encouraging you to make know you have the pen in your hand. And we encourage you to to write that story and write it beautifully. And think big, dream big, whatever you want, like create that story. I love it. We'd love to hear from you too. So tell us what story you're currently working on. And we'd love to be part of that journey. All right. I think that's it. Have an awesome Friday. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic.